for tuning in. Today I'm going to be working on a 3D vase or a freeform vase, something like this. Um, I made this to fit around this ceramic flower pot. So it's like a little succulent vase. So I'm going to be making another one today. And this time I'm actually using this, um, this is a window film. You can probably see, hopefully, the way the light kind of catches it and it gets like that prismatic effect. So I decided I'm going to pour on this and hopefully this texture and the prism will kind of transfer to the resin. So this is the side I'm gonna pour on. So this side, the back, this is where I did my um, little drawing because I didn't want the uh, marker to transfer onto the resin. So all I did to decide like how big of a sheet I needed was I took my vase or flower pot, whatever you're using, I set it down and I traced around the bottom. So that way I know kind of where the bottom of the piece is. So any design I'm doing, I know where the bottom is. And then I laid it down and I put a little mark um, to see so I could tell like where, if this was folded up, where the top of the vase or flower pot would be. So I put four little marks and then I just hand drew kind of a circle. It's not a perfect circle, <laughs> but it's good enough because I'm not actually gonna follow the circle exactly. I'm gonna make it kind of a wavy line around there because once it's draped over the pot, um, I find if you do a perfect circle, you it's harder to drape and you end up with kind of a weird shape. So if you kind of make the edges a little bit random, it looks more natural when you drape it. So, and then I wrote on here four ounces so it takes between three and four ounces of resin for this particular size. Let me get my tape measure real quick. I'll measure that for you. So it's, it looks like it's about 10 inches across, a little less than 10 inches. So it really depends on how thick you want the piece to be. But what I found is if you use too much resin, it just keeps spreading. So um, if you want it a little thicker, you need to let your resin thicken up so it's not gonna spread out past the edge of where you want it to stop. Um, I don't like mine super thick, so I do three and a half ounces. Um, it really actually depends on what I'm putting on the edge. So in this case, I'm using these little clear beads. This is just vase filler. I think I got this at Michael's. Um, but if I'm doing bigger, chunkier things on the edge, like this vase where I used, that's abalone, where I use shells, I'll do four ounces of resin because it takes a little more resin to cover these than it will with these. So that's just kind of how I do it. But you can mix up four ounces just to be on the safe side. So um, you could also use a, a piece of clear plastic. Um, a, a shower curtain works really good. You don't wanna use anything too thin. Don't use like saran wrap or anything thin like that. It needs to be kind of a sturdy plastic. Um, so yeah, shower curtain is great if you don't want a pattern on it. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this, so this is the pouring side and I wanna tape this down because, let me move my camera over a little bit. Um, because you can see it's not perfectly flat. You can see the edges kind of curl. And if you're using a shower curtain, there's usually folds. And even if you use your heat gun and try to, um, you know, warm it up and lay it flat, it's not gonna be perfectly flat. So I like to tape it down. So I'm just using some frog tape. Okay, so like I said, I am using this as my edging, and that's going to act as kind of a dam, and it's going to help to keep the resin in place. If you don't want to put any kind of an edge on, you have to wait till your resin's pretty thick before you pour it, because it's going to spread and you have nothing to stop it. Um, you could, I thought about doing this, 
you could take some silicone caulking and make kind of a dam with that around here, but then you're going to have very irregular rough edges and I don't know, you know, trying to sand that, I don't know. So I always use some kind of something like this around the edge. Maybe you could also um, pour a small resin edge and let it harden and then pour your inside, the inside design, I don't know. I'm not sure, there's, I'm sure there's more than one way to do this, but this is how I do it. <laughs> so I'm just going around and placing these beads and I'm just gonna put them on the circle first and then I'm gonna shape them after I get kind of a nice uniform circle. So I'm gonna do this first. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of push it out in some areas and pull it in in other areas just to give it a little bit of a wave. Okay, so we're all ready to pour the resin. I've got, um, my resin is ready to go, and I am using the Sayu White from Eye Candy today. So I'm just gonna do a white um, vase. A lot of times I'll do different colors, they'll kind of marble things together, different blends, but I think with this um, texture i just want to try just a plain white and see what happens i'm hoping that the texture like i said earlier i'm hoping it transfers to the resin and i end up with that um, prismatic effect so i don't want to put any kind of fancy design or anything in the resin that might distract from the prismatic thing that'll be going on hopefully <laughs> Fingers crossed. So just mixing in the mica. Always want to give it a really good mix when you're using mica because you don't want any loose powder floating to the top or sinking to the bottom. In this case, the bottom is the design, so definitely don't want it sinking down to the bottom. It'll sink to the bottom in your design, but it'll float to the top in the cup. I don't understand the physics of that, <laughs> but. Okay, all mixed up. Just gonna hit it with a heat gun real quick. Get rid of any bubbles. Now what I like to do is start out with a really thin drizzle just on the inside of the beads. And then I'll slowly pour more and more towards the center. What's gonna happen is the resin's gonna push itself out and it'll usually flow into the beads and maybe even through the beads. So you don't need to really drizzle on top of your edging material unless you have a lot of it. If it's, you know, if you're doing like a big wide edge, then you might need to drizzle um, directly on top. I used to drizzle right on top, but you know what? I'm gonna put this in a more flexible cup at least for this first part, because it's too hard to control with this big cup. Now I can pinch it and make a little spout.
get all that out of there before I switch to the big cup. All right, so now I'm just gonna pour kind of inside that initial pour that I made. Slowly work my way to the middle. And you notice I'm not completely filling everything because the resin is gonna move, especially once I hit it with a heat gun. It's gonna start to move and kind of fill itself in, but I like to just fill it in with my stick because it gives me an idea of like where there are maybe some thin spots or some thick spots. All right, so I'm gonna hit with a heat gun. When you use a heat gun with this, you, you don't wanna overdo it. And you have to be careful, you don't blow away your edge. <laughs> Cause these beads, they don't have resin on them yet. So they are gonna blow away. So I'm only gonna heat gun in the center and I'm gonna start it in the center. So just a little bit, just to warm it up. And then I'm just gonna give it some time now. I'm gonna give it about two, three minutes, and um, I'll fast forward the video so you don't have to sit here. But I'm just gonna give it time to spread and get into the beads. So it takes a couple minutes to kind of work its way all the way through the beads. But I want it to get through the beads so that I can hit it with the heat gun and not worry about blowing all the beads away. And, um, That'll also let me see where it's maybe going through the beads because it's very possible that some of this resin is going to leak through. So I always um, keep my container of beads handy because I might have to add a few more in a couple spots, but we'll see when we get there. So um, I'm going to fast forward the video. Like I said, I'm going to wait a couple minutes for this to flow and then I will be right back. Okay, so it's been a couple minutes and the resin has seeped into the beads almost all the way around. There's maybe a few spots where it's still lagging. So I'm just gonna go in and do a really, really thin, very, very thin drizzle. Just kind of in the center of the beads. I don't wanna go too close to the edge because I don't want, um, I don't wanna overflow it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hit it with the heat gun and there's probably gonna be some beads that are gonna scatter. But that's okay. We didn't lose too many, so that's a good sign. That means the resin is definitely getting to the edge. So what I'm gonna do for the next maybe five minutes is just keep an eye on this because what I'm watching for is the resin to overflow the beads. And if it gets out of the beads in any area, I'm just gonna take some of these loose beads and kind of pack them in there just again, you know, to act like a dam a little bit of a dam to help keep all the resin in place. So like I said, I'll watch this for about five more minutes um, and watch for any overflow. But um, the next step after that, which I will see you back for in five hours, I'm going to drape this over the flower pot. So I will see you in five hours. All right, so it has been five hours and it is semi cured. What you want to do to check, because every resin is different, um, I like to just touch it and it should be just slightly sticky, but you shouldn't pull any resin away with your finger or if you use a stick or whatever. Um, so just like, I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> the tiniest bit of stickiness, but um, not gummy at all. And it's still flexible. 
You don't want to wait too long. If you wait too long, it's going to crack when you try to form it. So you got to find that sweet spot with your resin. All right, so I have my flower pot on a little stand. Hopefully you guys can see this. Let me zoom out a little bit. You see my messy workstation. And um, so normally when I do these, they go on the pot like this and then drape. But because this has this texture, which is what I want on the outside, I have to do it upside down. So I'm gonna put this little piece of plastic, this is just a piece of shower curtain I cut, over top of this um, flower pot rim, just to prevent um, any scratching or any, I don't know, any problems that might happen with this. All right, so let me try and turn this over. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try and line up that circle with the edge of the pot. Close as I can get it. And then it's gonna want to just collapse and that's fine. I try to guide it. Now it's gonna stick to itself if it touches itself. So you have to be really careful as you're doing this, not to let it touch itself until you're ready to stick it. <laughs> All right, so then I just use some of my tape. After I get a fold where I want it, make sure you guys can still see, um, I'll put the tape on the plastic and kind of tape it to the next little fold as I go around. So it takes a little bit of maneuvering, but just be patient with it and you'll be able to shape it into a nice ruffly shape. I ran out of those um, foam pieces that go on top of these little posts. If you have a, a tumbler turner, you know what I'm talking about. It's a little piece of foam that goes on the end of the post and it helps keep your vase or whatever you have on this post, <laughs> keep it centered. But I have all of mine in use right now with tumblers. So my little vase is kind of bouncing on its own here. All right, so I'm just going to try and make sure that's centered so it doesn't tilt. All right, let me just tip it a little bit so you can see. So it's kind of in this shape. So that's the shape it's going to harden in. And once it's hardened, then I'll pull off the plastic. <clears throat> and I do like to do a sit test just to make sure it's gonna sit level. So I'm just kind of pressing down on the um, flower pot just to make sure it's level in there. All right, so now this is gonna sit like this until it hardens, so about 24 hours. So I will be back um, after everything is nice and hard and I'll peel off the plastic and we'll see what it looks like. So hopefully it works. <laughs> so I'll see you tomorrow. It's gonna... Good morning, everyone. So it is all cured. Time to take the plastic off.
So, um, the pot is not coming out, I don't think. Maybe it will, let's see. Oh, yay. <laughs> a little bit of playing with it, loosen up the plastic, but once you get it loose, it'll start to peel. the texture on there. The texture looks so cool. It looks like folded up lace. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh, so cool. Well, all right, you guys, thanks for tuning in this time. And if you enjoyed the video, as always, please subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.